Dawson Rider with you. Hey YouTube, Dawson Rider here with my review of Kamen Rider X8 episode 15. To start off, I want to apologize if the lighting's really weird in here, like it's kind of dimmer and I have like these lights going on that's making it really glowy around here so it's kind of bright and dark at the same time. Like usually, I think I mentioned one time I recorded this video at night so the light was a little dim. I usually record during the day, which I am right now, but it's an overcast day so I don't have my big window casting light on me so I just apologize for the weird lighting situation. I'll, I'll work it out better for next time, I need to get another lighting lamp that balances it out. Anyway, this episode isn't about lighting lamps. This is about X-Aid. And so X-Aid this week was a pretty solid episode. Um, it was the debut of Combatter Paradox, which was really neat. I like his suits a lot. I like the concept of the switching. I just think they both look cool. I really like the sounds on the Gashats. Um, I really like, um, like the games they're based off of as a puzzle and fighting and like the way he described it and then used it in battle. That's like the one thing I think X-Aid really excels at. Um, is using the video game theme perfectly for fighting. Um, just like the innovative ways you'll see it, uh, like the just little characteristics of video games, like stuff like this week's when he did the puzzle thing with all the power-ups, or like last week when he did the, you know, Mario jumping under the boxes thing. I thought that was really neat. Um, so that's like one thing I for sure think x excels at. Um, throughout the rest of the episode, it kind of started off with that one girl who, I don't think, Taiga knows who she is, but I don't think we do unless I missed it. Like I said, I look away a lot. But, um, she like stole his driver and tried to turn into Snipe to take out x and it didn't work, and like it activated the Bugster virus that was dormant in her, so, sucks to be her right now, and like she hates Emu, and it was because she saw him at some sort of event. The, the same event that he... Okay, I got ahead of myself, sort of. Well, okay. So in this episode, we find out... We knew that x has the game disease. Um, and we find out uh, after Taiga confronts Genom, which is really funny because he's like, Hey, you killed Laser because you, he knew that Emu had the game disease, right? I know too. Why would you tell him that? You just established that he murdered him, and then you're not only confronting him about it, letting him know you know the same information, but you're doing it in a semi-secluded area. Granted, after that, Genom said not only did he eliminate him because he knew, but also because he was going to stop the Bugster virus. But isn't that what they're all working towards? I don't know. Just There's so many little character decisions in X-Aid that just kind of piss me off, but regardless, he explained to him that his... Be their, True Begins Night wasn't five years ago, it was Begins Begins Night slash Global Freeze was six years ago when Emu was, uh, put a virus in him, or they, that's when they infected him, it wasn't when he was a kid. Like, I, I was like half split, it was like that's kind of interesting, but it also feels like a total write-in where they didn't need it. Maybe they thought 16 years ago was too recent. And then I got confused before they showed the flashback because they were like six years ago, I'm like, wait. Emu was not like 16, is he? Like, and then I was thinking about like how long it takes you to get, like, you know, into medical internships and medical school. But so basically, he had a surgery when he was a kid, and then he like passed out when he was playing games, and that's when they got gave him the surgery with the bug survivors, which is six years ago. Like I said, it feels like kind of a total write-in for me, like, and where it, it wasn't needed. Like, I'm hoping it makes a little bit more sense later. I mean, it doesn't not make sense, but I mean like the reasoning for it. And then it was said it was after that that he became serious about becoming a doctor and they highlighted that it's probably tied to why his personality changes when he games. I don't know what that maybe will be hinting towards. I mean, does it mean like maybe there's a Bugster living with in them? Like maybe, that would be kind of cool. Like if there's a Bugster, like, obviously the Bugster lives in them with the virus and it comes out, but like if it almost was sharing kind of like the way Phantoms worked in Wizard, but then that would be another just piece they're using from something else. I don't know. But so that was kind of discovered, and uh, uh, Brave pseudo eavesdropped on it, and you know found out. We find out at the end that he, Snipe actually explained everything to him, but it was kind of inferred because the, after that scene, Brave interrogated X8 about that write-in surgery that they made, and then like after that, both Snipe and and Brave went after Emu, and I was kind of there for it. I mean, I I don't know if I've come across clear. I don't like Emu. He just bugs me. So like. I was dying of laughter in the scene when he, he lured x to that place and he's like, oh, I got her belongings in your grass shots. And then he's like, boom, and he kicked him in the face. I got more enjoyment out of that than I should have. I just don't like Emu. Maybe he knocked his seat back into place. I don't know. But so it was just, it was funny to me. They're both attacking their brave stuff. It's like, oh, good, brave's here. And then he starts slashing him. Total side note, I do love the level one forms because they're adorable, but 
I've noticed this in the last three weeks in particular, but it takes any seriousness I'm feeling out of the situation when they transform and then they're that chibi form. It always leaves me kind of wishing that my original thought that that form was going to be used to fight the bugster in the human's body and then the regular suits were out of, I kind of wish that was real. Because like, as much as I think it's adorable, it just kind of takes me out of the moment a lot. It's like, oh man, this scene's really tense. And then he's like, bah! That was a like Elmon noise. Anyway, but so they started attacking and like, it's because he's patient zero. So again, this was a moment where I was confused by character motivations. Like, I understood that they both viewed X8 as a threat, but isn't he technically then a patient? Like, usually, I'm usually against emus like the patient first and against emu in general. I mean, that sounds bad, the patient first, but I mean like, you know what I mean. I'm more of a Braves approach guy. It's just the end justifies the means, get it done quickly, don't waste time on this story of the week stuff. That's my point. Anyway, um... Uh, it's just funny that like, so when they find out they have a patient, oh he's got the bugster virus, they're not like, KILL HIM! But they did that with Emu? So like, I'm, I don't think I understand why they decided, oh let's take him out instead of trying to cure him. Maybe it's because he's patient zero? I mean, if Emu were to die, being patient zero, that, I don't think that would make the bugster virus go away, if that's what they're thinking. I don't know. But, it was funny to see, but it just seemed kind of strange. Like, it's like, I understood it, but at the same time, it's like, hey, that doesn't really make sense. But they're interrupted by Paradox, like I said, I really liked his intro, it was really cool, um, all that jazz, but, um, oh, and there was this really weird bit where, like, the theme song didn't play at the beginning, it just went straight to the title screen, so I'm like, oh good, I'll have to fast forward. And then, uh, at the end scene, when they're all knocked down and X8 is just kind of flailing there on the ground, and Brave and Snipe talk about their flashback to when he informed him. The theme started playing with credits, and it was really out of place with the tone of the scene. Because the theme song's really, like, upbeat, so it would more so be played during a fight scene, specifically, like, a victorious one. But this was being played over kind of a quiet scene, uh, reflecting on a flashback and reflecting on defeat. And not to mention the credits rolling at the end reminded me of, like, the end of Toku movies, you know, when they play the theme or one of the cover songs or whatever with the credits rolling. It was just strange. Um, but overall, this was a solid episode. Again, I'm just kind of confused by certain character motivations, but I'm looking forward to seeing where it goes, at least mild to moderately. I'd probably give this episode a 7. But anyway, that's about it. Until next time, make sure you have the crazy podcast at writersrangersrambles.com, and of course, don't forget to like, comment, subscribe. Until next time, Dawson Ryder, signing out.